Hello, Adam here. Welcome back to some more Imineko and Seagulls Cry. Let us continue. This is what we start with. <laughs> I ended two lines before the chapter end. Okay. Well, 12 years later, October 1998. Oh. The clinic that Nanjo had opened and later passed on to his son still existed on Nijima. This aged doctor was Nanjo's son. The atmosphere about him was very different. And so we've got the new, uh... Here we go. I'll read that in a bit. We'll talk in first. Nanjo's son said that very indifferently. あの島の事故が無理もないことと思います。私も同じようなものですので。私など私どもの気持ちも分かりでしょう。あれは不幸な事故でした。それを事件だと騒ぎ立てたがるのは無責任なテレビと雑誌だけです。彼らの態度には心底うんざりさせられますよ。Nanjo had been bathed with attention for being one of Vishramiya Kinzo's few friends. Was that? There was Probably an aggressive and persistent rush among the witch hunters and the press to use Nanjo's son as well, a surviving relative, as a source of information. Let's see, what can we learn about him? Look over the Nanjo clinic, unlike Nanjo... Yes, Nanjo, unlike Nanjo. He gives a slightly dispassionate and different impression. Uh, after the commotion surrounding Rokunjima, he grew to completely despise the press. Never get again did he attempt to speak of what had happened at the time. He used to have a daughter who was afflicted with an intractable disease, but unfortunately, she wasn't able to live out her natural lifespan. The doctor went on and on, criticizing the press indignantly. プライバシーも肖像権も果ては人権さえも認められてたかわからない私ですからその槍場のないお怒りを要行させてきますだからこそ私の人生をここまで台無しにしたあの事件は一体何だったのかどうしても知りたいのですそれでここへ来ました私も
Doctor realized that he'd said something wrong and remained silent for a while, looking uncomfortable.私は私の人生に決着をつけるために今日ここへ訪れています。私は18です。あの事件は私の人生の12年を奪った。そしてこれからも奪い続けるでしょう。私は6歳のあの日からずっと暗闇に放り込まれたままなんです。そんな私でも
<笑>あるにはありますおですが非常に誤解を招きそうなのであまり言いたくはありません何ですか<笑>それを教えてくださいフォーウォークビートランプブッシュ After saying that much, he wouldn't be able to fool Anjay by dodging the subject. Eventually gave in, and after making Anjay swear herself to secrecy again, told her. Yubin? <laughs> 差し出し人が私になっているのですがそれは身に覚えのないものでした何者かが私の名を語って出したということです宛先は北海道のレブン島北方領土の話を抜きにすれば日本の最北端の島ですその宛先人がなんとレブン島の住所ではありますが父の名前だったのです。Interesting. しかし、送付先住所が間違っているらしく、住所不明の付箋が貼られて、差出人である私のところへ戻ってきたわけです。It was truly a strange tale. Nanja's son's name was written as a sender. However, he said that he hadn't mailed the letter. What kind of envelope is it? Is it one of these envelopes, perhaps? In short, that meant someone had faked his name and sent it. The destination was Nanjo Terusmasa on Hokkaido's Rebin Island, but the lot number written on it didn't exist. So the local post office had been unable to deliver it, and instead sent it back to the sender, Nanjo san. <sighs> yes. The doctor stood up and faced the bookshelf. There was, there was packed a group of dictionaries who could only have been ornamental. <laughs> Meant to make it very clear that the owner was an intellectual. <laughs> When he pulled several volumes out from there, a large brown envelope peeked out from behind them. Okay. He took that out and tossed it onto the desk. It had been carefully sealed with cellophane tape. Its faded colour and dryness made it clear that it had been sealed 12 years ago. <laughs> Being so persistent that it was annoying, the doctor removed the seal with a paper knife. Then, when he tilted the envelope, an already opened mail envelope spilled out. The, the, uh, the envelope had weight to it, hinting that there was something other than the letter inside. A finger, maybe. Or perhaps a ring. The recipient was certainly Nanjo Terusmasa. Seeing that was a huge shock. Following that incident, Nanjo's corpse had not been found, and he had eventually been treated as dead after going missing under extraordinary circumstances. Interesting. Hmm. Despite that, this letter addressed to Nanjo in Hokkaido existed. One could almost take this as a sign that he'd faked his own death and escaped to Hokkaido. Now, I don't think so. I think what's more likely is that the intended recipient is the son. Intended recipient is the son, and they needed it to be delayed in arriving. That's why they sent it to somewhere else. So perhaps Dr. Nanjo. Wanting to send it to his son but needing it to arrive after the incident reverses like the sender and the recipient and sends it to somewhere that 
it would take a long time because this is we're on the island south, south of Japan I'm pretty sure um, so sending it all the way up to the north of Japan would probably take make it take longer round trip um, and the letter would then arrive after whatever happened for what reason would they want a delayed message? Watashitachikazukunitotewa,自動に関わらず,うれしいことです。私も初めは、その可能性を考えました。しかし、この封筒の送付先住所は存在しないのです。つまりこの封筒は届くはずのない郵便なのです。Everything about it will be wrong, I'm guessing. Um, but perhaps a clue. So, hmm. Perhaps, uh, they send it to Hokkaido just to make the trip longer. Then the rest of the address is a clue of some kind. もちろん否定はできません。ですが、住所の番長を見る限り、どうもそうは思えないのです。What is the house number? Oh, <laughs> I just couldn't wipe away the feeling that the sequential number after it, 1234567, was a little insincere. It felt like a fake number that some kid had made up. Yes. If the destination address doesn't exist, uh, doesn't exist, mail is generally returned to the sender. But even in the case of an incomplete address, the local post office will often courteously, and to the best of its ability, research to find whether the sender's intended destination exists. When they still can't find it, mail is sometimes returned after an investigation of several days. It seemed that the same thing had happened with this envelope, and the stamp was postmarked on October 3rd. This post marked on Nijima. Nijima was a long way away from Ribbon Island. On top of that, the destination was also nonsensical. It had taken more than a week for the mail to be returned. In other words, there was probably a high chance that having the envelope returned to the sender after an unfixed amount of time had been the goal from the very beginning. Indeed, why do something like that? Even before asking what it was that had been sent, this envelope was already wrapped in mystery. After getting the doctor's permission, I tilted the already opened envelope. From the inside came a small folded letter and a small key with a number plate attached. Then a magnetic card slid out. A A one one two uh A A A one one two was engraved on the key's number plate. I don't know what it meant. The magic magnetic card was pitch black and had gold characters engraved in it. Members was written in English. Yet black gold lettered card design made it feel like something very high class. But of course, I didn't have a clue what kind of card it was just from that. I unfolded the letter. The contents were extremely brief, and only the following was written. There is seven fifteen one one two nine. We saw that before, didn't we, in the previous episode? Um. Oh, um, I think. Near the end of last episode, which is the episode which 
Um, we sort of, uh, well, which is the episode, which this is uh, the continuation of. Huh. Also was the name of a certain massive branch known throughout Japan, as well as the word central branch. That was all. これは貸金庫のカードと鍵、そして暗証番号でした。それも普通の貸金庫ではない。特別な顧客のみに許されているらしい不気味な貸金庫でした。What After he finished putting his affairs in order following his father's funeral, he had visited the bank. Pin and key and card. There was no doubt that something of great importance was kept there, and he had been naturally curious about what it might be. At first he hadn't known what to do. The card wasn't something he'd owned in the first place. When he mustered up his courage and showed the card to a bank clerk, he was then switched to a clerk of clearly high status and was guided to a large vault on the fourth basement. The security on the way there was strict. The doctor had himself stored valuable items such as real estate transcripts and safe deposit boxes as before. But this was something on a whole different level. But it could be passed on to a new person. ですが、とにかく厳重な金庫室でそのものものしさに怯えました。Perhaps just some a couple of parts to prove its existence. それで。カードをリーダーに通すと暗証番号の入力を求められました。そしてそこにある8桁の数字を入力すると認証され、金庫室への入室が認められました。すごい光景でしたよ。まるで He had entered that room along with the clerk. It seems that as soon as the card was read, the vaults he had, right, had a right to were determined. But the safes he opened were lit with a green light, while those he couldn't open were lit with a red one. I feel like we've heard of A112 before as well. ちなみに、それ以外の金庫にもずらりと緑ランプが点灯していました。20個以上はあったと思います。20 As Clark watched, the doctor had unlocked and opened the safe. When he did, the safe drawer like a cabinet, large cabinet had opened, and an expensive looking Juralumin case peeked up, peeked out. I was carried into a separate room, where for the first time, Clark left, and he was introduced to the contents. <laughs>現金。どれほど。診察の100万円の束はちょうど厚みが1センチになると聞いたことがあります。And <laughs> it isn't normal to store a whole hundred million yen in cash in a case, uh, like a, in a safe like that. 
much easier to deal with it if you put it into an account and turn it into numbers. Mm. And someone is unable to do that, then it's clear that there's something wrong with that cash. I feel like A112 was engraved in the gold bar or something at one point. Maybe episode 2 or something? I can't remember. はい。そのまま施錠し直し元の金庫に預けて立ち去りました。この鍵やカードも捨てようと思いましたが、何が起こるかわからない。そのため、誰にも内緒で12年もの間、本棚の裏に隠し続けてきたのです。あれが何の金だったのか、私にも未だにわかりません。この封筒をお借りすることはできます
have heard Chachi Kamasawa let something slip, but unlikely. In any case, I hope you've all enjoyed. Let me know any feedback you have in the comments. And if you happen to know like uh, where I can see when the numbers first appeared, uh, that would also be great. Uh, I'll probably try to look for it before I record the next part, but uh, might not have the time, who knows. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, let me know any feedback you have in comments, and until next time, see ya.